Hey guys, Matt here today. Um, going to finish Ephesians 6, Lord willing. And uh, last time we were in Ephesians 6, we left off actually talking about Ephesians 6.18, praying in the Spirit, right? Paul says, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. And we talked about that. We talked about what praying in the Spirit means and, and what it doesn't mean. What's praying in the flesh? If there's praying in the Spirit, certainly there's praying in the flesh. And what do they look like? And in fact, Paul says praying with all prayer and supplication. Well, we looked at all different types of prayers. We looked at the, the prayer of, of healing, you know, the intercessory prayer, the prayer for our daily bread, the prayer for, prayer for revelation, right? Paul prays that in Ephesians 1, 14 and on. Uh, the prayer for, for all the fullness of God to be filled with all the fullness of God. The prayer for more, more spirituality, more, more of God in uh, Ephesians 3.14. And, and here Paul says, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. And then he goes on, he says, to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. All right, so we're called to intercede, to pray to make prayer and supplication for all the saints, right? To persevere. Remember, we looked at a prayer, a, a, a persevering prayer. We looked at the guy in Luke 11 who went to his friend's house and knocked on the door and said, I have company coming. Give me three loaves of bread. And his friend said, no, no, no. And they went back and forth. And his friend had the house shut up, right? Because back then it was a big deal to close the house and to put all the kids down. It was, wasn't like today, right? It was a big, big process. But what happened? He kept knocking. He kept knocking. And because of his impudence, because of his persistence, because he persevered, his friend opened the door, gave him what he came for. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Right? Why does Jesus put that in there? Why does God put that in his word? Because that's what he wants us to do. That's what he expects us to do. He expects us to knock, 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 to persevere, to keep praying. And here Paul says, persevere making supplication for all the saints. In fact, I should have put the saints first before the lost because we're, we are, I think it's more biblical to pray for the church before we pray for the lost, to pray for the saints. Remember, at this time, Paul was in prison, right? Paul was in prison for for. So we can have this gospel. So we can have this Bible. Paul was in prison for sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. In fact, all of the apostles, except for uh, John, who died on the island of Patmos, who was exiled on the island of Patmos, I believe he died of old age, as far as we know, um, all of the other apostles were martyred for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul was martyred for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right now, today, November 29th, the year 2010, somewhere on this earth, people are being beaten, imprisoned, separated from their loved ones, perhaps even killed for the gospel of Jesus Christ. This gospel that, that I can so freely share, this gospel that so many people scoff at and, 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 and act like it's foolishness, this gospel is, is the reason People are being imprisoned and beaten and tortured and perhaps even killed today. So what does Paul say? Persevere in praying for all the saints. Persevere. We have to pray for the church. In fact, Paul goes on in verse 19. He says, and also for me. What is it, Paul? How could we pray for you? Here's Paul. He's asking for prayer, right? Paul's in prison. Paul goes from prison to prison from beating to beating, working hard, traveling by foot, by ship, shipwrecked, bitten by a snake, stoned almost to death. Actually, he did die and God revived him. I mean, Paul goes, his life is, is poured out for this gospel. And here's Paul in prison. And what does he want? I mean, he's got to ask for, for new clothes. Maybe freedom. Maybe that the walls would come down. Maybe that the jailers would be struck and dead, right? Here's what Paul prays for. And also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. There it is. What is Paul? Paul's in prison for being bold, and what does he pray for? More boldness. That's amazing. 
for the for for more boldness. Pray for me that I have more boldness to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Wow. Now there's a godly man, right? There's a man who no doubt spends a lot of time praying in the spirit, right? So that's that's a little section here on prayer. We're called to pray at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication for the saints. We, we looked at what we can what we can do. This divine power we have in prayer, breaking down strongholds, unveiling the eyes of people that that are blind to the gospel. But I want to end here on this little section on prayer. I want to end here because I know that there are some people watching this video that aren't born again that are not in a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Whether that makes you mad, whether the term born again makes you mad, whether you don't like the, the whole gospel, whether you... whatever. You know at the end of the day when your head hits the pillow, you know that you're in no condition to meet God right now today. So how do you pray? Does God hear your prayers? Wow, that's a... those are, those are tough questions, right? I mean, He's God, He certainly hears everything, but but God won't answer the prayers of someone who's not in a relationship with Him, will He? I mean, if I'm at the store and some kid walks up to me and says, Hey, mister, hey, mister, will you buy me that thing over there? I'm going to say, hey, no, I don't, you're not my son, you know. Now, if my son comes up to me and says, Daddy, Daddy, please, maybe I will, right? If it's, if it's my will to buy him that, that whatever, right? So there's, a, there's an example of, someone who's in a relationship with the Father and someone who's, someone who's not. But here's a prayer that I've seen God answer time and time again. So I'm going to challenge you. This is a challenge for those who are not born again, for those who are not in a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Here's a challenge. Ask God to reveal Himself to you. Ask God that He'd raise the blinds and that He'd show you who He was. Ask God to make Himself known to you. Do it with a humble heart. Do it with an expectant and believe that he can do it. Ask God to do that and you'll be amazed at what you see. That's a challenge for those that, that aren't born again because this is written to the Christian but of course we know that people are watching that aren't saved. So there's your challenge. Ask God to open your eyes. Ask God to make you see him for who he is. Ask God to reveal himself to you. You do that and watch what he does. Alright, peace.